So I want to talk about what angels sing. Now let's go in Luke chapter 2 and verses 8 through 11 and let's look at this passage of Scripture. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them. Uh, the angel of the Lord came up, uh, upon upon them and the glory of the Lord shone round about them and they were sore afraid and the angel said unto them fear not for behold I bring you good tidings of great joy which shall be to all people for unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior which is Christ the Lord even Charlie Brown <laughs> reads this passage of scripture and we find that in Christmas programs, it is spoken about more and more in our world today, though people are trying to move this out. They're trying to say, happy holidays, instead of Merry Christmas. I saw someone being interviewed, one of the stars the other day, and they were talking to her, and, and she was not ashamed. She said, I am a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, and that that's the reason for the season, and that he was born in Bethlehem, and that's why we have the season. But we sing about it. Um, do any of y'all watch any Hallmark movies or any uh, of some? What are the other channels that uh, play this? Because my wife knows all of them, and she watches all of them, and uh, repeatedly, again and again. For a month and a half. Um, so I, I kind of I, I, I kind of know all these movies. I've seen them every year a couple of times. And there's a there's a recurring theme in many of them. So she tells me I'm a spoiler because even the new ones, I go, okay, now this is what's gonna happen here, and this is gonna happen. Cue the interruption. They're gonna kiss, but no, somebody's gonna interrupt them. Now, one of them's going to get offended, then the other one's going to get offended, and they're going to think that they don't like each other, and then one of them's going to... But anyway, we... But even within these movies and all, they're singing Christmas carols, they're singing hymns about the Savior being born. The sad part is we sing about Him, we talk about Him, we have a season for Him, but many of us don't realize who He is. And, and when these angels announced and they said, we bring to you good news, behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. It's going to be for all people, not just for the Jews. Eventually it will be for all people, for unto you is born this day. I love those words. The angel breaks it down and says, to you this day. That's pretty particular and that's very unique. Not somewhere, sometime, someplace, somebody will die for someone. He says, no, this day unto you is born in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Now, the Jewish people understood when the angel said, a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Because these were titles that were reserved for the Messiah. So they understood, but for many people in the world today, when they think of Jesus, they think of, uh, well, they think of the little baby in the manger that we celebrate during the Christmas season and that it's this message of love and, uh, and happiness and uh, giving and presents and everything else. But they never get beyond the manger scene. They never get beyond the Christmas scene season and when Jesus is this little child that God has come to live among us and to show us his love and which he does but he shows us his love through a message a message that he gives to us and it is a message of salvation it is a joyous celebration when Jesus is born here on earth as a matter of fact you go down to verses 13 and 14 it says Suddenly, suddenly a celebration breaks out. After they announced that there was a Savior born unto the people of Israel and ultimately the earth there in the city of David, suddenly the angels break out singing. 
And a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. What were they celebrating? They were celebrating the declaration that had been given just earlier. The good news. Said, I bring to you good news. Let's look back at that verse in, cha- in verse, uh, chapter 2, verses 10 and 11. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, <coughs> I bring you good news of great joy. Now, when we think of the word joy, the word joy is the anticipation of receiving what one desires. So this is good news that you're going to get what you are desiring, which you are desiring the coming of the Messiah. Good news of great joy, of anticipation. Our life of faith in Jesus Christ is our anticipation of the Lord's involvement daily and particularly and uniquely within our life. That's the joy of the Lord. That's why the joy of the Lord is your strength because your anticipation of God's involvement in your individual life, in your problems, in your struggles, in your situations, that becomes your strength, you see. Our anticipation of God's involvement. But they use this word... This this term, we bring to you good news. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Now what did that good news mean? As a matter of fact, the word that is used for good news is euangelion in the Greek. And euangelion in the Greek really basically says good news. And when we talk about the gospel of Jesus Christ... The gospel of Jesus Christ is called the good news. What is this good news? It was not just that he had come. It is not just that a baby was born. But that this baby was the Savior, Christ the Lord. And and having a baby is a wonderful and incredible thing. I mean, uh, we've got grandchildren now. I don't know if we'll live long enough to see great-grandchildren. I don't know if that'll happen or not. But having children and having grandchildren, isn't it an incredible time in your life? I know that when my wife and I, um, I look forward to seeing our little boy that we lost between our two sons. And I know that one day I'll see him in heaven. And uh, but those joyous and wonderful, incredible experiences of Brian and Brett being born. And uh, what an exciting thing that is, that 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 renewal, that hope, that that. That the whatever that has happened, but there's more to this baby being born than just a baby being born. This baby is different. The angels tell the shepherds to go and find him in Bethlehem. We'll talk about that later. And they went and they found him in a manger just like the angel had told them they would find him. But let's look at this word, these, these, this word good news. It was not just that he had come, but that he has come as the Savior. What is this gospel, this good news? Now, this is not unique to me. You can find this printed in many different forms. But the gospel is the good news that God became man in Jesus Christ. He lived the life we should have lived, died to death. We should have died in our place. Three days later, he rose from the dead, providing that he is proving that he is the Son of God and offering the gift of salvation to all who repent and believe the gospel. There again, when you go back to the news that the angel gave, the angel said, this shall be good news, and peace on earth to all on whom his favor rests. Now, to those who have rejected Jesus Christ, I'm afraid it's not going to be very good news for them at the great white throne when they find out that he was, in fact, the Son of God. And there are many who will face judgment having declared that he was not the Christ, but in judgment they will find that he is the Christ. It won't be good news to them. But I'm so glad that when I stand before heaven's gates, when I stand before the throne of God and I look up, I am so glad that today with all of my heart I believe and I know and I stand upon the assurance that he was and is in fact the Savior, Christ the Lord. It's kind of like, you remember when Daniel was thrown in the lion's den? And um, 
as he was falling, the lions were ready to eat him, but the angel of the Lord came and closed the mouths of the lions. Instead, he laid around on the lions all night. I don't know what kind of a bed a lion would make, but they look pretty cuddly as long as their mouth is closed. <laughs> and in the morning, the king comes. You remember what the king, he says, is your God able? You know, was your God able? Are you alive? And he hears the voice of Daniel down below and said, oh, yeah. He's sufficient. Our God still lives and he still rules and he still reigns. And the men who had conspired to get him thrown into the lion's den, they themselves wound up being thrown into the lion's den. And it says the lions caught them on the way down. The lions, it wasn't that the lions were not hungry while Daniel was there. The angel simply would not allow them to eat him. So when those who had betrayed Daniel were thrown in the lion's den, it says the lions leapt and caught them even as they were falling into the pit. So this good news. Now I want to remind you, Paul even writes to us in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verses 1 through 4, and he says, Now I would remind you of the gospel, the good news. I preach to you that Christ died for our sins, that he was buried and that he was raised on the third day. This is the gospel of Jesus Christ. This is the good news. It is not that just a baby was born in Bethlehem unto a virgin and that he is some expression of God's love. No, he was God in the flesh living among us. Years ago, I told you a story that I heard a long time ago about about God coming to be among us. And how that there was a, in Nebraska, those storms would blow in very rapidly from the west. And before there were, you know, uh, weather channels and forecasts and all of that, the weather up there is, it's, 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 can be quite extreme. And so back in the late 1800s, it was a kind of a sunny day and somewhat warm that day. And the children had gone off to church that Sunday morning. And the father... The, the wife said, look, you need to come to church with us. It's, it's near Christmas. And, and he said, well, I, I never have understood that, 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 that Christmas stuff anyway. And that I, I, I don't even understand why God would come here or why he would send his son. That didn't even make any sense to me. Y'all go on to church, but I, I'm just not a believer in that. So they went on to church, but suddenly one of those rapid changes in the weather happened and, and, a, and a storm blew in from the west. And suddenly the temperature dropped into the minus figures. And it's a blizzard. There it could be 43 one day and minus 10 the next. And suddenly one of these blizzards blew in. And, and the wind was storming and everything. And, but he knew that his family was safe at the church house. But the man, the farmer looked out and he saw that there were these little birds that were being blown violently by the wind. So he got the bright idea. I'll go out and I'll open the barn for them and they can fly into the barn and be safe and out of the wind. So he goes out and he opens the barn. He turns on the light. But the little birds continue to be blown by the storm. So he tries turning the light off. He tries turning the light on. And then he goes out and he tries to shoo the birds into the barn. But they won't go. And the poor little birds are just being blown and bashed through the limbs of the bushes and the trees and everything. And finally he's done everything he knows to do. And he's standing in the door of the barn. And and he cries out and he said, in his mind, he just cries out and says, You know, if I could just somehow become a bird for a minute, I could go and show them And suddenly it hit him, and he fell to his knees, and he gave his heart and life to Jesus Christ. Because, you see, that's exactly what happened. Jesus came, and he showed us the way. Live the life that we should have lived, paid the price that we should have paid, and then proved when he rose from the dead that he was, in fact, the Messiah. But I want us to go, it may seem like a strange leap, but I want us to go to Luke chapter 15 to the parable of the lost sheep. To the parable of the lost sheep. 
In Luke chapter 15, verses 4 through 6, Jesus has just given the parable of the one sheep that has wandered off and has gotten lost. And then Jesus says something about this lost sheep. Does he not leave the 99 in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? Now notice, he's not coming back till he finds it. He says, I'm going to look for him and I'm going to go until I find it. I want you to know that God was willing to spare nothing. To go to greatest lengths, to go to any length, even the giving of a son, so that he would find us in our sins. And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and goes home. Now I want you to keep that in your mind. He joyfully puts it on his shoulder and goes home. There are some people who almost have an image of God that when he saves us, it's like, oh, they prayed a prayer. I guess I'm going to have to spare them. You know, that God's up there and he's desiring to punish us. He's desiring to cast us into hell. He's desiring to destroy us. Uh, and, and wouldn't you know it, you went and believed. You went and prayed. Now, nah, I can't condemn you and I can't fry you. I'm going to have to save you. But no, the whole reason Jesus came. John 3, 16, how does it start out? For God so loved the world that. So he went and he said, and at one point Jesus even looks up to heaven and he says, Father, isn't there some other way we could do this? Must we go even to that place? Many of you have seen the pictures of the shepherds plucking a sheep off the side of a cliff. There were two things that the shepherds would carry. There would be a rod and a staff. A rod would just basically be a club stick that you would fight or battle with, and then the staff would be a stick with a crook where you could literally reach down and hook around the sheep and grab it. It may seem harsh or hard, but if you're sparing its life around the neck or around the midsection, if it's small enough, and lift it to safety. And many of you have seen the pictures and the depictions of Jesus hanging on the side of a dangerous cliff reaching for a sheep that's on a ledge that's about to fall to its death. And that's where we were. And Jesus is like, you, you want me to go down there? You want me to do that? And God says yes. He says, then your will be done and not mine. And Jesus is willing to go for the cross. Where he found us. He found us at the cross because that is when he put us on his shoulders and carried us up that hill. You see, I want you to know that it was for the joy set before him, that's you and me, Jesus endured the cross despising its shame. He climbed down in the midst of our sins. He climbed down in the midst of our circumstances. He climbed down in the midst of our rebellion. He climbed down in the midst of our filth and our guilt and our sin, and then he lifts us and he puts us on his shoulders. You see, he carried our sins. It says right in Isaiah chapter 53 and verse 6, We all like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the sins of us all. I want you in your mind to picture Jesus Christ lifting us lovingly tenderly, carefully, and draping us around his neck. And when he draped us around his neck, friend, I want you to know that he took upon us all of our sin. He took upon himself all of our sins, that is. And he placed it upon himself. He took them even to the point of death. It tells us in 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 24, And he himself bore our sins in his body on the cross. His journey took him to the cross. Now that picture of Jesus hanging on the side of a dangerous cliff, he went far beyond that. He went beyond that cliff. He went up Golgotha's hill carrying his cross. He allowed himself to be crucified. For Jesus said, no man take my life, takes my life, I lay it down. 
And Jesus knew the only way he could lift us to his shoulders and carry us home is that he had to go by way of the cross. Isn't that incredible when you hear that? His journey to us in our lostness was by way of the cross. And having borne our sins on his shoulders, he now bears us upon them and carries us home with him. And he carries us joyously with him to heaven. Jesus told his disciples, he said, look, I go to prepare a place for you so that where I am, you can be also. And if that was not true, I would not have told you. You see, Jesus didn't come to just show us our sinfulness. He didn't come to just show us his holiness and his righteousness and his love. He came to take us to where he is. He is not just forgiving us of our sins, which he does. He then gives us his name. We become joint heirs with Jesus Christ and he carries us home to be with him. You see, the lost and the found. And when he cometh home... He calleth together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. The parable of the lost sheep. Friends, I want you to know there was a reason why the angels were singing on that night. Maybe you haven't understood this yet, but the angels are here. The angels are here to serve us as human beings and the will of God. And the will of God is that every one of us be saved. So why would they not be celebrating, recognizing that in that moment, God was making a way for mankind to be saved? Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I have a, if I have a guardian angel, he's probably weathered for the years. And we've seen movies about guardian angels and everything. And I know some angels probably, uh, you know, do a little overtime. Some of you guys in Mercy House, man, God has been watching out after you. He's been, you don't even know what all God has done, done to spare you and to bring you to this moment of his grace and of his mercy. And angels celebrate. The angels are here to help God's will be done, which is that none should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So why wouldn't the angels celebrate? You see this tied together in my mind, in my spirit, when you go on to the end of that passage in Luke chapter 15, when the angels once again are singing... Not only during that time that Jesus was born, but I want you to know when Jesus rose from the dead, there was a cosmic celebration in heaven because sin was conquered, man was redeemed. Jesus proved himself to be the Messiah, which the angels knew that he was. And in that moment, there was celebration. And in the same way, I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Friends, I want you to know that God loves you. He cares about you. He has gone to such extreme lengths to save you and to redeem you. And when do the angels sing? I believe the angels sing when another sheep is brought home. I love this picture of Jesus Christ with me draped around his shoulders, uh, walking, being the light, into the light with us who were in darkness, uh, and walking up to the throne of grace and recognizing, Heavenly Father, i got another one. I've got another one for you. Let's celebrate. Uh, angels, somebody grab a harp. Somebody grab a trumpet. Let's start praising God uh, because that's when angels sing. So it was good news that night. You are what this is all about. Do you understand this? You are what this is all about. It was a long wilderness we were in and a difficult place. We hung over hell, but his arm was not short. And he lifted us joy and joyfully put us on his shoulders. And he brings us to his father's house. And the angels sing again. Hallelujah. There is celebration in heaven. You know what? My prayer, my prayer is that God will begin to save so many around these altars that we'll begin to hear the heavenly chorus even in this place. Uh, because the angels who are encamped around about us will say, I'm sorry, I know I'm supposed to stay quiet and not let people know I'm here, but I can't help but celebrate a little bit because of the sheep who are coming home. 
Hallelujah. I believe we can get some of those, those breaths of heaven, a little bit of those hint of heaven, a little sound of the angels uh, when multitudes are being saved. I close with this. I close with this, that song, My Defender. I love the words in that song where it says, When I thought I had lost me, you knew where I left me. I thought it was over. I thought it was done. I thought there was no hope. I thought I was hanging in an impossible place. But you re reintroduced me to your love. You picked me, you picked up all my pieces and put me back together. You're the defender of my heart. So I want you to understand something this morning. The Lord loves you. The Lord loves you. And, and, and since he's been through all that he's been through, what a joyous moment it is. If you're watching by recording a live feed, what a joyous moment it is for Christ and for the angels of heaven when finally he finds you. And when you call out and you cry out and he's able to reach down and wrap his arm around you and lift you to safety and put you around his neck. For we were on his neck. We, our sins were bore on his shoulders, it tells us in Isaiah 53, when he was crucified on the cross. But I'll tell you what, he never dropped us. He never dropped us. He walked through hell itself and he never dropped us. Hell tried to claim us. Hell tried to claim him. You see, hell couldn't claim us because he couldn't claim him. Hell tried to get him, but hell couldn't hold him. And because hell couldn't hold him, I'm on his shoulders so hell can't hold me. That's the salvation that you and I have. So Lord Jesus, I thank you this morning.